Here's Brian at Beaver Corporation booth showing you a whole bunch of really great stuff uh, from our non-Japanese makers that we import and sell within Japan. And one of our great partners is Flyhawk from China. As you can see here, uh, we've got a great selection of their 1700 scale ships and some 172 armor. Up here we've got the, the Campbelltown in uh, 700 scale, the Nyad cruiser. Uh, coming down here we've got an excellent uh, detail set for the, uh, the hood, the, the HMS hood. Here we've got, uh, this, is the, uh, the, this is the Hermes, isn't it? Yep, it's the Hermes with all kinds of crazy flags, semaphore flags or whatever those are set up there. And another great set is for the Queen Elizabeth set. Uh, which is also their kit as well, and the, the amazing photo etch set that goes with it. You can see all the crazy, crazy detail down there. Now for armor fans, 172 armor fans, if we come down a little bit here, uh, we got their, their brand, big brand new announcement is this uh, 172nd M1A2 uh, Abrams SEP main battle tank here in 172. Even in 172, the Abrams is a pretty big tank, uh, and this will come with uh, some photo etched parts, and amazing detail, if I can show you here without, I think it's bolted down here pretty good. You got some great detail. And the photo etched really helps make the small scale not look so small. They even have grab handles here. I don't even know if I could put that on myself. That is a very small grab handle, but it is cleanly put on there. And if you go back over here, you can see we got the sprues lined up. Interestingly, the treads are molded in, uh, I was going to say one part, but actually two parts, left and right halves. I guess you would put them together around the road wheels uh, like that. So yeah, a great M1A2. We, uh, over at Tommy Out, we saw the giant 116 scale M1, and now we got the an incredibly detailed 172nd one over here as well. Uh, oh, I forgot. Here's something new. I forgot to mention. Going back to ships for a second, uh, we got the HMS Penelope as, it, as she appeared in 1940. This is a, an all-new kit coming from Flyhawk and 1700 scale ships, which is, uh, you know, they got their main start doing the 1700 scale ships and a series of 172nd uh, German tanks, which will come over here. If we pan slowly over here, you can see a selection of a bunch of kits here. Here's some of their older kits, these incredibly detailed, tiny uh, FT-17 tanks here. And this is uh, two, in, two in a set, because you can see this is very small and incredibly detailed. Uh, and then we have the other selection of uh, Panzer Ones, uh, in, all with the, the complicated overlapping road wheel suspension systems there to make them look really cool. Uh, these are two new ones that are coming. This is a, also a Panzer II Lux. Lux, and uh, here's another Panzer II with some added armor on there. So great stuff in 1700 scale in the ships and 172nd scale armor uh, from our good partners at Flyhawk. Now here's a great brand that also does 1700 uh, scale ships called Kajika. Kajika is interesting. Kajika is a, uh, a type of fish in Japan. I don't know the English uh, name for it, but it's Kajika, and uh, Japanese. these aren't Japanese fish, Japanese big ships. Uh, this is the very famous battleship Kongo, or it was a cruiser, I think it was called at that time. Uh, this is as it appeared in 1914. This was their first kit that they released, the Kongo. This is on sale now. You can get this at HLJ. Uh, and they're, but they're doing all four sister ships. They're doing the, they did the Kongo already. This is the one that's coming soon. This is the Hie, as it appeared in 1915. And you can also see the Congo has a nice set of uh, detailed uh, photo wedge parts on here, which are offered in these other sets over here. Barrels and things like that to do it up. Uh, the Hia, as it appears here, is, is just uh, the pla all the plastic parts that come in the kit. Uh, none of the etching parts are on there yet. Um, now, the other two sister ships, they're also doing the Kirishima and uh, the Haruna. So once all four of those are done, you'll be able to do all four sister ships in the Congo class. A uh, very famous battleship. Uh, that, that sailed into World War II from here. They had a lot of refits and things like that uh, going forward, but this is as it appeared in 1914. So the Congo, the Hiei, the Haruna, and the Kirishima and 1700 plus detail sets, uh, all coming from our partners at Kajika. Here we are checking out all the great kits from our, our new partners, uh, Kinetic Models from Hong Kong. Uh, we just started uh, importing them this past uh, May, uh, not May, past March, and we're very excited because they have a huge lineup already of great 148th and 135th scale 
uh, kits, aircraft and armor. You see we've got some uh, interesting A6 variants up here, uh, Kfir, F-18s, different Mirages, a lot of Mirages. They also have a wide series of F-16 kits. This is an, uh, an F-16i Sufa, Harriers. Uh, this is the most recent one. This kit just came out last month. This is the Alpha Jet as flown by the uh, f French flight demonstration team. Uh, what is it in Japanese? It's Patrouille, Patrouille du France. Okay, you guys can uh, uh, criticize me for my horrible French later. Patrouille de France. Anyway, uh, 35th scale, RG31 Mark V. And coming down, you can see some other um, of the older kits. Uh, this is also Skunk Model Workshops, which is uh, a sub-brand, uh, sort of, of Kinetic. And we have the F-16 XLs, which was very, very popular. Uh, the S2 Tracker and the C2A Greyhound with an F5 in the back and a Reaper. And uh, our little buddy Godzilla there, who was never too happy with the Reapers in the new movie. So, Kinetic, we're very happy to be carrying Kinetic. And now, next, I will show you an all new tooling. Checking out the newest tooling from our uh, good partners at Kinetic. Uh, this is a Mirage 3BE slash D slash DE slash DS slash D2Z. You can make a lot of variants from this. Uh, it's the first 148 scale kit of a two seat variant of the, the Mirage. Uh, I believe this comes with six, six different uh, marking variations for uh, a variety of different countries, air forces. South Africa, I think, is in there. France, of course. Um, a couple other ones. And uh, we got, the, again, this is an early test shot. It's got kind of a milky canopy, so this is not anywhere near close to, well, it is actually close to being production. Uh, this is supposed to be released uh, mid-June sometime, so we expect this to be coming soon. Uh, we got uh, one of the early test shots of the sprues, spray-painted silver, and then this buildup of an early test shot here, too. And it looks like it's coming along uh, very nicely, so it's nice to have uh, the very first two-seat version, two-seater, uh, of the Mirage. Um, you can build in the kit uh, trainer versions and also uh, strategic or tactical attack versions of it as well. So, yep, very nice having a two-seater Mirage in your collection. Beaver Corporation is proud to now be the importer in Japan for Atlantis hobby kits. Um, I personally love Atlantis hobbies because they do a lot of uh, the old stuff. They do uh, not repops, but um, re-releases of a lot of old Aurora kits, uh, some old Ravel figure kits. Uh, they also have a great series of original uh, all-new tooling flying saucer kits uh, like the um, I Want to Believe Flying Saucer. Uh, uh, the Ray Harryhausen's Earth versus the Flying Saucers, Flying Saucers. Um, a couple other types that glow in the dark, have lights in them. So very cool stuff, very quirky, very cool uh, stuff that I love, science fiction oriented. Uh, but one of the th uh, great things they do is uh, a lot of the um, old Aurora kits. Uh, some are from new tools and some are from the original Aurora toolings. Uh, Aurora was uh, one of America's biggest hobby companies back in the 60s and 70s, started in the 50s, I think. Uh, and I grew up in the 60s and 70s building mostly Aurora stuff, so I love it. And so what I'm holding here is um, Atlantis' latest kit. This is a 172nd scale Douglas DC-9 uh, that is, has been popped from the original Aurora molds. Uh, the kit originated in 1965. And, and I got to say, building this the other day, the molds are very, very clean. There was no flash. The fit was very excellent. Um, although it's a 1965 Aurora tooling, so as you can see right here, uh, there's very little detail on here, which, which I think is actually very cool, because uh, you get just this smooth, clean palette that you can go crazy on with painting. Uh, the DC-9 came in a lot of different liveries. Uh, the kit includes uh, decals for a, a Hughes Air West yellow aircraft, and also a very classic looking TWA aircraft. Um, so it's a very simple kit. I built this and painted it, ready to go, as you see it here, in about an hour and a half. That's how easy it is, and it's very strong and tough. You could probably throw this and it would fly pretty good. Uh, but again, uh, the detail is 1965 vintage. But I mean, look at it. It's very cool. It's a 72nd scale DC-9. Um, and not only did I confirm with uh, Atlantis beforehand that this is from the original Aurora moldings, when I was building it on the inside of the wings, you can still see the Aurora markings, Aurora Plastic Model Companies, 1965. Uh, it also had a Ravel sticker in there too, because Ravel actually owns the bolds, I think. Uh, so all you model historians out there who are interested in, in old classic kits, uh, you can still get them um, from folks, uh, from people like our, our good partners at Atlantis Models. So 172nd DC-9 and a whole lot of other good stuff from Atlantis. We can look at some new kits from our really good friends at Amusing Hobby. Uh, we got some uh, kits that just recently came out. This is the British tank Conqueror Mark I, which is really cool. Uh, I think this is the most recent one. This is the Jagdpanzer II. Uh, this was a, I don't think this was ever really made, 
Uh, this is a conjectural model like that, which is very cool. And we got some more conjectural models based on some actual fact. Uh, these three big brutes up here, all based on the E100 series. Um, this one is probably the most almost really happened <laughs> type one uh, with the Krupp style uh, turret there. So the E100 was a not really a paper pants, but they were actually developing this towards the end of the war. It's like a 140 ton. Uh, super tank that, that the Germans were building at the end of the war. Uh, luckily, it never never got made. Um, and this is just this, like the standard. Um, oh, this has got an 88 millimeter gun, I guess. I thought it was supposed to be fit with the the one uh, 128 or larger gun. Uh, but we got the big turret, the big tracks. Uh, here's a variation. I don't think this ever really made it into any stage of production. It's got twin 88s uh, for the anti-aircraft roll. Twin 88 stuck in that big uh, turret with a similar chassis to that one over here. Uh, and then we got another guy here, which is like the other one, but just uh, so showing you, I think it's got working suspension. I don't know if, uh, if, we, can, if we open this. I've never had this turret off, so I don't know what to see inside. I don't know if I can get it off. Maybe we can see some suspension working in there. There it is. Okay, you can't, but it's, uh, it's all hooked up in there. I got the tape. We got turret ring detail. That's always pretty cool. Let me put that big boy back on there. Or not, because I don't want to break it. Now, there we go. Right, it looks cooler this way. Uh, so these kits, uh, we don't have prices on these yet, and we don't know when they're coming. Uh, Kinjitsu Hatsubayote, that means coming soon. Uh, so we hope to see these big boys soon. There's going to be three, uh, three different variations of it. This guy's a little bit different, but I don't know what exactly is different now. Maybe it's the same guy. We don't really know. They just brought these today and said, here's our new stuff. <laughs> we'll tell you more about it later, uh, but we know it's coming soon. And uh, this is another little guy who, to be honest, I have no idea what it is. They put it out here uh, as a companion to, to the big E100s. Uh, I'm not sure if this was a conjectural one. So here's a contest for everybody at home watching this now. What the heck is this? <laughs> put your answers in the comment section and we'll get back to you later. Um, again, our good buddies at Amusing came in this morning and gave us uh, all these wonderful samples, uh, but we have yet to really get an explanation as to what that is. And I thought I knew a lot about tanks, but I have no idea what that one is. Uh, I do know it's cool, though. So, I'm using Hobby. A lot of good stuff coming. We're checking out all the great stuff from Takom, one of our fantastic partners here at Beaver Corporation. Uh, you're looking at now is, uh, came out a little while ago. This is their selection of 135th King Tigers with full interior. Uh, we got a unpainted and a painted and a painted and chopped up one so you can get a good idea of uh, all the goodies that go inside that thing. Uh, incredible models. Uh, on sale now, 9,400 yen. You can get it at HLJ. And move over a little bit to the right here and check out this big rocket here. This is a 35th scale V2. This is on sale now, right now. Uh, this kit, as you see here, look how big this thing is compared to my hand. I got a big hand, but that thing is huge. It's only 3,300 yen available at Hobby Link Japan. And this very model here was built by uh, Hobby Link uh, celebrity Todd Brown. You guys know him from Gunpla Uh You think he only builds Gundam? No, he builds fantastic military stuff too. Look at this rocket. Look at that great paint job. With that, uh, this is like I guess the test version with the black and white, so they could tell how it's rolling as it flies through the air. But yeah, great kit and a great job on that kit by Todd. Thank you very much. And coming down a little bit more, we've got a big empty space because Takom is still bringing in some samples later today. Unfortunately, we don't have time uh, to wait for them to film our video. Uh, but there's another shot of a, a chopped up or not fully assembled yet Tiger II there. You can see all the interior. And coming down, we've got another V2. This one was built by another one of our uh, friends at Beaver Corporation. Uh, the same V2 as you saw with Todd, but this is the different set uh, that includes the uh, this is the SS100 uh, Hanomag tractor and the Mailwagen trailer uh, and the launcher, uh, like that. So on sale now at HLJ. Now here's some newer stuff. Uh, this one was built by yours truly, me, although not to completely finished like Todd did with the rocket, just finished it with primer. Uh, but I can tell from experience, having just built this, these uh, Takom kits go together like a dream. No fit problems whatsoever. The engineering is fantastic. And this big beast here is a two-in-one kit. Uh, it's 35th scale. You can build, a, it's the American uh, super heavy tank T-30 or T-34. Not the Russian T-34, but the American T-34. You can build it either one. Uh, the T-30 had the big fat 155 millimeter gun, which is separate parts, uh, or the, uh, the T-34 had the 122 millimeter, which was much longer, and you can build this either with the uh, mantlet cover or without it. 
or the, the canvas cover there like that. So it's a very nice kit. It goes together like a dream. Next to that is another monster in 135th. This is uh, the famous mouse. We saw some E100s uh, in the other section, but here's a big mouse from Tacom. This is cool because it's got workable tracks, workable suspension, because you all know you want to get your big mouse model finished and zoom it around on the carpet. Uh, photo etched parts, superb detail all over the place. Uh, so you can go ahead and put your old uh, Dragon mouse kits uh, up for uh, you know, on eBay or whatever and uh, pick up your new Tacom kits because these are excellent. Uh, one of the samples we were expecting and it's not here yet is the uh, V1. This is the V2 version with the turret and all on there. There's the V1 version that had a, a simulated uh, turret just for the weight for testing purposes. But you like big tanks? There's another one. <coughs> now we're going to slide over here and see. Uh, these are actually on their way to Hobby, or not Hobby Link, to Beaver Corporation right now and then Hobby Link. Uh, we're supposed to get these on May 16th. Uh, this is uh, the British FV432 uh, Mark II or Mark I. Uh, armored personnel carrier, and it's got a full interior, as you can see in here. No engine detail, but it's got the, the, the driver's compartment and uh, the passenger compartment back there. Uh, full detail on the roof sections in there. So that's a brand new kit that's, that's coming. Uh, and here's something I'm personally excited about, because I love, I love this particular tank. This is the American M47 uh, Patton medium tank, uh, and it's coming in uh, two different kit versions, or, uh, but you can do three different versions out of it. Uh, you got the, this is just the, the standard M47 here, and, and then we got the M47 EM over here. Oh, I think that's, actually, I think these are switched. There we go. I'm pretty sure this is the EM, because it's got the different back there. And this is the original patent there. Uh, uh, up until now, we've only had the old Italeri kit, which came out many decades ago, which still is a very nice kit, uh, but Tacom has decided to take it to the next level and have these uh, all-new tooling kits of the M47. Uh, and you can build uh, one of them. Well, this, one's, this one's the two-in-one, so you can build it with the two different uh, type turrets. It doesn't come with two turrets, but it's got the different things. Uh, and this one over here. And you get a lot of different choices of muzzle brakes as well. So yeah, M47s and mice and uh, T-34 giant tanks, rockets and all other great stuff. Uh, and some other samples that we don't even have here yet, but maybe you'll be able to see uh, on the HLJ site uh, in the coming days. So yeah, we're very happy to be working with our, our uh, great partners at Tacom, uh, who keep on bringing out great armor kits like you see here. Thanks, Tacom. Here's a new company we just started carrying. This is Revolsis from China, and this is the Panzerkampfwagen 6 Ausführung C or B. It's a two-in-one kit. You can build it with some different turret variations and things like that. Uh, and it's also got a lot of interior parts. As you can see here, it's got the turret basket and all kinds of interior turret detail there. Boink. Remove the top of the hull. Again, no engine parts, but you got a, a rather nicely detailed driver compartment. The radio operator with the machine gun that works. Not much room to sit there with all that machine gun gear in there. But yeah, nice detail on the interior there. Um, this also has workable tracks. Not workable, well, well, if you push it hard enough, any suspension is workable. But uh, there were nice workable tracks there. I'll try to put it all together in one piece again over here. Boink. Probably be best just to display it with all these parts off. So yeah, we're very excited about uh, our new partner from China, Revolsis, in our 135th scale uh, VK 36.01. Panzerkampfwagen 6 Ausführung C B 2 in 1 kit from Revolsis. Checking out uh, the goodies from our partners at the Tiger Models. Uh, right here, I'm holding this is the most recent thing. Uh, I think this is shipping out now. This is a 35th scale Leopard 2 Revolution. MBT. I think it was a, some kind of a proof of concept type prototype. Lots of added armor. Look at the, you can barely see the gun on this thing. The turret is so huge. So much uh, extra stuff added around the, the basic uh, Leopard 2 platform there. But yeah, it's got, uh, this is working suspension as you can see here, undulating. Uh, it's got the individual workable tracks like that. So very nice. That's coming. You can see some other samples. Uh, from our buddies at the Tiger here. We got the, these Nagmahon, Nagmahons here. Uh, Terminator 2 fighting vehicle. Uh, if we go up here a little bit, you see we got a T90MS from 2015 and then a, another T90MS that's unpainted here with metal smoke chargers and all kinds of stuff like that. So some good Russian stuff, some Israeli stuff, uh, German stuff. Uh, oh, I forgot this one over here. This is also new that's coming out right now. This is uh, the French AMX-10RC as it appeared in 1991. 
Uh, I built the older version of this kit, and it's an excellent kit. Goes together like a dream, uh, as all these Tiger kits do. So, yeah, a lot of good stuff coming from our buddies at Tiger as well. Oh, I forgot, we got some down here. This is a new kit. This is all new kit from Tiger. This is the F4, F, what, what is this one? This is uh, it's an F4 Corsair, F4U4, okay, because you got the four-bladed prop ready to go like that. So, a little super deformed, kind of like an eggplane style thing there of the Corsair. We're happy to see that. And another sample they sent that we had not heard of yet is this ERC-90, an F1 Lynx. Uh, so we don't know when that's coming. We don't know what the price on it is, but that's a very cool six-wheeled armored car. And hey, while we're here, let's talk about another one of our good partners, Model Collect. As you can see, we got a nice array of 172nd scale uh, armor here. And these are actually uh, not just samples. These are, these are, you can buy these kits or models like this. These aren't kits. These are finished products. They also have the kits of these, but they also have the finished models like you see here. And these are on sale. You can get these also at uh, Hobby Link Japan. What we have over here is another kit that's coming up. We don't have a price uh, or a release date on this yet. Uh, it's an E75, another conjectural tank. The E75 tank looks very much like a King Tiger uh, with a full interior and engine. You got the Maybach engine in there, all ready to go. Uh, metal barrel, lots of photo etch parts, like the whole turret basket. I think is a, oh no, you got plastic in there too, but uh, the floor is a photo etched part. The end caps on all the shells are photo etched. Uh, so lots of good detail there. And this is all 172nd with a full interior. Uh, so a lot of great 172nd scale armor from our great partners at Model Collect. Checking out stuff from our great partners at Meng Models or Meng. In Japanese is called Meng. I think in Chinese it's actually Meng. The rest of the world I think it's Meng, M-E-N-G. Anyway, Meng Models. Uh, has a great new series from the World War Tunes game, and what I'm holding in my hands here is a super cute little King Tiger. Uh, that's not 148 scale. Well, it's about 148, maybe a little smaller than that, but that's not what this means. Anyway, uh, very cute, very friendly, very fun, and they have a whole series of these. I'll go ahead and put them back up here, and you can see his friends. So this is a King Tiger, and we have a Tiger 1, and we have a Sherman, and we have a KV-2. Which is interesting, because if you know what KV-2s look like, there's really not much difference between this and the real one. Kind of looks like this anyway, particularly from the front. The side's a little different. But yeah, these are very interesting. And again, the, it's from the game World War Tunes. Ah, Shermans and all kinds of stuff. Now, coming over here, this has been out for a little while. This is a, uh, uh, a not super deformed tiger. This is a, an actual King Tiger, very popular kit uh, that we've been selling from Mung. Uh, available at Hobby Link. And coming down more, we'll check out some of the other stuff. Uh, this is this is the, an actual scale model, 1 700th of the Lexington. And back here we've got a, similar to the tanks, we've got a super cute deformed model of the Lexington with some little Wildcats and TBDs and I don't think there's an Avenger on there, but super cute warships coming too from our buddies at Mung. We'll put him back here. Super cute. Uh, not super cute, but kind of super cool, is we've got a super cool T-72B1 uh, battle tank there next to an Abrams M1A1 AIM or M1A1 uh, Tusk. I don't think this is a Tusk version. I think this is the AIM. Um, and one of its kind of buddies next to here, I think we might have seen this in a previous show. I might have had it. Uh, I built this one, and again, it's a dream to build. This is an, uh, a, a Hummer H1 in 124th scale. So this is a civilian version of the Hummer, but it was the most military-like version, the H1. Uh, the H2 came out, it was a little more subdued, and then the, the Hummer H3 was pretty much just like any SUV. Uh, but this has got opening and closing doors, movable doors, movable opening hood there, full detailed engine, full detailed interior. Uh, 7,800 yen, it's been on sale for a little while now. You can get it at HLJ. So this is all kinds of great stuff from our buddies at Mung. Mung, Mung. But I've forgotten this. This is the great, uh, great announcement from Mung. Uh, in their aircraft series is a, it's a 148 scale F-35A Lightning II in uh, Japan Air Self-Defense Force markings. They don't have the markings here, but check it out. We got the sprues here. This is again a test shot, as you can tell, because the, the clear canopy is not really that clear. Uh, but this is what the sprue layout's going to be. Um, we can see it here, all very cool stuff, 48 scale. It's got all that uh, interesting stealth technology surface texture type stuff on there. Uh, so yeah, this was a great announcement that we just heard about. 48 scale F-35A, Lightning II. Fighter 
the JSDF coming from Mung. Here we are checking out the great new stuff from Wingnut Wings. Uh, you're looking at right here is the uh, Janin style Taube. The steel dove, I think that translates as. Uh, this is, kit is, uh, as you can see here in English, is expected sometime in 2017. It's under development now. Uh, very interesting aircraft in that uh, the, the, the ailerons and everything were flexible. That's how it turned. It had all the wires and controls came out here. And as you can see from the pictures over there, uh, it's a very delicate aircraft. Even the model is very delicate. Uh, we first saw this on display at uh, the Toy Fair in Nuremberg in February. Uh, that was the first test shot. This is the third test shot. They still have some work to do on it, uh, but it's looking really great. It's got, this is, these are the plastic wheels that we see here, but it will also have these extremely, I don't even know if you can see this, extremely fine detailed uh, photo etched wire wheels that will make it look exactly like the real thing. The plastic wheels look pretty good too, but these are even better. All right, now we're going to come down a little bit here and see this is a Kaijo Hapyo. This was announced here around the world. This is the first announcement uh, of this new set from Wingnut Wings. This is the Greentail Trilogy set. It includes three uh, albatrosses, albatri, albatross aircraft uh, of the Yasta 5 um, squadron from uh, World War I. It flew albatross D5s and D5As. Uh, it includes three full kits and a pile of decals. We've just got uh, one set of sprues of the fuselage and the wings sections there for people to see. Uh, now the, the tooling is uh, from their previous albatross toolings, but the decals are different uh, to model a variety of aircraft uh, from uh, the Asta 5 there, which was apparently one of the, uh, was one of the most famous uh, squadrons uh, in World War I, featuring uh, the infamous Hermann Goering. He was a pilot uh, in the Asta 5. Uh, so uh, Beaver Corporation is very proud to be the first to announce this kit around the world. Uh, as you can see here, we got it in English here. This is expected to come out in July. Um, we're taking, uh, I think we're taking orders for that now. It should be up on HLJ as well. Uh, so please check it out and put in your orders for this great set now because um, it's pretty cool. Three full kits, one thirty-second scale, uh, albatrosses of the Yasta 5. New announcement from Wingnut Wings. Ladies and gentlemen, you are hearing the sound of a 1966 Porsche flat six boxer engine, a clear model kit, and it's motorized from our partners at Francis of Germany. This is a very, very high level kit, although very, very easy to build. So you can see it's moving here, it's battery operated. It's got real Porsche sound. Uh, it's got the fan belt, air cooled, so all you do is have a fan blow on that. I don't know if you can see in this light, but the, the spark plugs are lights that actually flash on the power stroke. You got the crankshaft, you got the valves, everything in there uh, works as it does on the real Porsche engine. Uh, and this was built uh, by our illustrious leader, Scott Hards of Hobby Links Japan and uh, Beaver Corporation. Uh, he built it and to build this, all you need is a screwdriver, which comes in the kit. And it also has this handy dandy tool, which you have to use to set the timing on the valves when you're assembling it with the timing belt. Uh, so if you know anything about cars, uh, shouldn't be a problem. Even if you don't know anything about cars, it comes with a very nice uh, manual here, a construction manual that's interspersed with facts and photos about the real engine and the real cars. And uh, this is not, a, it's not a, an inexpensive item, it's 27, 1,500 yen, it's available at Hobby Link now, but it's a one quarter scale, uh, fully operational as a model, uh, model of the 1966 Porsche flat six boxer engine. And as you can see, it's very cool. So we let it segue us out with another purring Porsche sound from Francis. Checking out the latest new real space kit uh, from our partners from Australia. Horizon models, as you might have seen in previous Hobby Show videos, uh, their first kit that came out was the Mercury Atlas kit, uh, which I built. Uh, after that came the Atlas uh, missile kit here, as you see here, missile, missile, depending on where you're from. And uh, the one that just came out uh, is the Mercury Redstone uh, rocket here. And these are all on 172nd scale. The detail is fantastic. Uh, you get some excruciatingly tiny photo etched parts. I don't even know if you'd be able to, do I even dare to pick it up? I bring it over here. Can you can you even see those little tiny antenna parts on there? I don't know if you can, but it's tiny. Uh, I modeled this one uh, as uh, Gus Grissom's Liberty Bell Seven, which was a the second the second American in space was Gus. 
in this little tiny rocket right here. Um, so it's a great kit. It's on sale now, 8,300 yen. You can get it at uh, Hobby Link Japan, as you can uh, all, the, all the, uh, the other ones. Uh, we hear from uh, our buddies at Horizon that there are more great things uh, in the Redstone family coming up, uh, as well as uh, some other, uh, I think will be very popular, real space items coming in the future. So Horizon Models, uh, if you're a real space fan, like I am, uh, they're a company to keep your eye on, because lots of great stuff coming out. Mercury Atlas, uh, Mercury Redstone and Atlas Missile, all from Horizon Models. Checking out the new releases from HK Models, Hong Kong Models, uh, from Hong Kong, as, it, as you would expect. Uh, this is their second variation of uh, the 132nd Mosquito they released last year, or the year before, I believe it was. Uh, this one builds into the uh, Mark 9 or Mark 16. I think that's got the, the, uh, the different uh, uh, engine setups. Uh, like that comes with figures and photo etch set, big 132nd scale. Uh, and their release that will be coming, oh, this is uh, actually coming out in June. We don't, uh, we don't have a price on that one yet, uh, but we do have another one here. Uh, this says June, but actually this is probably more like July for this one, as I was just talking to the, the president a little while ago. This is a Dornier DO 335A trainer. Uh, as you can see, it's got the, the two-place cockpit uh, for the, the pilot and the pilot and training. The, the, the big two-engined um, uh, propeller-driven aircraft uh, that actually, it, it, you might think this was a, a uh, prototype of something that never was made, but it was actually made and used uh, in, uh, towards the end of World War II. I don't know how active it was, but a very interesting pusher-puller pusher prop design there. Uh, so the Dornier DO 335A uh, is coming in uh, probably July, and uh, the big Mosquito Mark 9 and Mark 16. Uh, two great new kits, big kits in 132nd scale, coming from Hong Kong Models. Yes, with Airfix, we have, uh, this came out last year, the 172nd B-17. This is one uh, specially built as a cut model to show the interior. It has a very complete interior, uh, which is nice. You don't get to see much of it unless you take a razor saw to a lot of it like I did. But it's an excellent model, builds very easily. We also have from last year their 148th P-40B Warhawk. Uh, again, another excellent kit. Uh, had uh, several options in terms of the cowl flaps, uh, retracted or lowered landing gear, um, seats for the inside, depending if you're building a British or a US version, and a very nice pilot figure is included. Uh, coming down here, new from Airfix, the much anticipated 148th Supermarine Walrus Mark I. We have all the parts sprues here, uh, except for the clear parts, but the detail is really outstanding. Uh, they obviously spent a lot of time, probably with their laser scanner at Hendon or something, scanning the one they had there, or maybe the one at the Fleet Air Arm Museum. Has a full weapons load as well. Now we'd like to move back up uh, from the Czech Republic up here on the top shelf from Mark I. They've been doing a series of 1 720th World War I German Zeppelins. Uh, they had done the uh, P class earlier. This time they've released as a P and a Q class. The difference being the Q class was longer, and there's an extension included in the kit that you insert into the body of the Zeppelin to lengthen it. Quite a nice little kit. Right next to it, we have the models bit. Sukhoi 17M3, models which are a well-known maker from the Ukraine. Uh, they specialize in uh, various Russian aircraft. And this was a completely new tooling using the latest in computer-assisted design as a very well received kit, very highly detailed. And next door to that, we have models with new sub-brand, A and A model where they've done the AA-60 uh, firefighting vehicle. It's predominantly an Eastern European uh, usage vehicle. It's quite an interesting design. Uh, if you take a close look, you may notice that the cab seems to be split in two with the uh, chemical nozzle in the middle. That's because the basic uh, vehicle was originally designed as a Scud missile launcher. And that's where the missile sat, was between those two cabs. 
And the company that built the real vehicle took a look at it and went, well, we can probably find some other use for such a useful uh, truck. And one of those uses was the firefighting vehicle that you see here. Now coming down a shelf, starting here on the left, Mars model, another maker from the Ukraine. This is their new 148th kit of the Lovotchkin 15. It was a contemporary of the MiG-15, uh, designed around the Derwent engine instead of the Neen engine that was, was fitted to the MiG-15. It was, by all accounts, an exceptional uh, aircraft, beating out the MiG-15 in almost all areas, um, except for ease of construction. The MiG-15 was a much easier aircraft to build, and so Russia decided they'd make that their premier fighter rather than the uh, Lovotchkin design. Moving next door, we have a brand new company from Latvia called Krokko, as in crocodile. And their first kit is this uh, Type 92 heavy armored car. It's actually a light tankette. This is a 172nd scale full resin kit. Uh, it's very nicely detailed and was uh, for, for a full resin kit, is, this was, I built this myself, was my first full resin military kit. I found it surprisingly easy to put together, no surprises whatsoever. And uh, as far as I've been able to determine, this is the first time this particular vehicle has ever even been kitted in 172nd scale. So it's definitely something the small scale uh, armor fans uh, will be excited about if we get this Japanese type uh, on their shelves. Next to that, from Taiwan, we have Veteran Models, their new uh, products that they've just announced. A total of 10 uh, types of turrets and radar sets for use with Russian uh, and U.S. types in 1 200th and 1 350th scale. If you zoom in here, for example, this 1 200th AK-130, 130-millimeter gun, mostly uh, resin parts, but the gun barrels are brass, and it comes with a complete set of photo etch, so all those ladders uh, and grips, that's all photo etch brass. Uh, down in the front center, there's a very nice set of uh, ANSPS radars for U.S. ships in 1 350th scale. Again, just absolutely exquisite detail. Uh, in, again, in resin and uh, photo etch for most of the antenna bodies. Uh, Veteran Models has a, a very well-deserved reputation for outstanding uh, detail parts. And I think you can see why when you look at uh, those sets. Uh, from Ukraine, Mikromir. These two kits, these are both currently available. We have the uh, Hecht uh, Mini Sub. This was a two man uh, craft that was designed originally to place a demolition charge on the seabed underneath an enemy ship and blow it up like the British X craft did during World War II. Uh, I was also able, though, to carry a torpedo as this model here has. Unfortunately, it was not a very stable design and didn't go anywhere, but it's a very interesting looking craft. Next to that, we have a uh, UB-1 class German submarine from World War I. I mean, it was a fairly small craft. There's a 1 350th scale. Mikromir does uh, a lot of these very interesting these are two examples of the types of, of craft they've produced. Right down here in the front, from Castle Hobby in Taiwan. It's an interesting item. This is a detail and upgrade set for the F-16 egg plane that's readily available from Hasegawa. Gives you a very highly detailed afterburner can, a new radome with the lightning strips, and uh, bird cutter IFF aerials, 
underwing drop tanks, uh, some of the uh, underfuselage strakes that I don't believe are included in the actual egg plane kit, as it was uh, somewhat simplified for, because uh, it's an egg plane, obviously. Uh, pilot with a new style helmet. This has really uh, turned out to be quite a popular item. And if you have an egg plane and are looking to bring it up to more modern standards and detail it, this is definitely the set for you. Next door from the Arsenal model group, we have uh, three kits here. Uh, last year, Arsenal did a brand new tooling of the uh, Hawker Sea Fury in 148. Uh, and they've finally gotten around to doing an FB-11 with the full weapons sets, as you see here. We have a uh, choice of drop tanks or bombs, and then rockets outboard. Also from Arsenal Model Group, uh, new kits of the Polikarpov R5. We have a uh, regular R5 in the front here as a built example. And in the back you can see the sprues for the R5A float plane version. Uh, the sharp-eyed amongst you will also notice there's skis on those sprues, so they're probably going to do a ski variant. I have not heard about that. Um, but they have announced they're also going to do the torpedo carrying I believe it was the R5T uh, variant uh, in 1144 scale to start, uh, and they say they're planning on moving to 172nd scale later, for those of you who like slightly larger aircraft. But it's a very nicely done uh, aircraft, even in this tiny scale. Now, right in the very front, from the American company Resin to Detail, these are parts that are designed for the Hong Kong models. 132nd B-17 series. Uh, they, have, they offer three variant variations of uh, pilot seats. These come in packs of two, by the way. There's just one on display here each. We have versions with cushions, but no belts. Cushions and belts. No belts and no cushions, depending on how you would like to model your aircraft and whether you want to use ex uh, extra photo etched belts or not. Uh, they also make a very nice set of oxygen tanks, uh, ones with the mounting hardware uh, fitted already, or just plain empty tanks. And you get uh, four of each of these uh, in one pack. So it's a good value, uh, and of course it would be useful for any 132nd U.S. aircraft that use those oxygen tanks. Now from Special Hobby, they've announced an all-new tooling uh, 172nd P-40 family. We're going to do the P-40E, K, M, and N. I love short tail and long tail variants. Uh, they have a fully built P-40E on display here. And the various fuselage sprues, which Special Hobby so kindly supplied, showing the differences. Uh, I believe this is an N here. And this should be an M in the back. And then on the left-hand side, there should be a long tail and a short-tailed K. And directly behind that is a new kit from Sword currently on sale. Their uh, Ki-102 Otsu variant, the ground attack variant. Another excellent kit from them. Directly behind it, you can see the poster for the Ki-102 Ko, the high-altitude interceptor variant. Uh, shown shooting on the P-51, which as far as I know never actually happened in the real world, but it's a very nice bit of box art. And that will be on sale uh, from next month. Now, continuing on from Latvia, Copper State Models, uh, a company that uh, moved into the plastic model business uh, last year with the Sopwith Dolphin and then the Codron G4. Their newest kit is the Armstrong Whitworth FK-8. They're offering two versions, the mid-production version here with the uh, rather large radiators extending down from the top wing and the trickier landing gear. And also the late model version, which is seen here that they kindly uh, provided us as a cut model with the engine fully displayed, uh, which has a simpler radiator and landing gear system. Uh, these are high-grade kits. It's a plastic kit with lots of photo etch and metal exhaust included. 
very high level of detail uh, and it, a type that has been eagerly anticipated by World War I fans. Now, Copper State also does a series of excellent figures. As you can see here in the background, this is a set of RFC uh, ground crew figures in various poses. This will be released in the future. Uh, available from next month will be this excellent RFC pilot in 132nd scale. This is perfect for the new wing nut wing sop with camel. Uh, they also offer here a set of 148th German armorers. Um, one's just standing on kind of a step here, but if you can imagine that the, this individual is actually inside the rear cockpit of an airplane while his uh, fellow armorer passes a bomb up to him from the ground to be loaded into that plane. And right next door, we have from Taiwan, Taiwan's Motion Studio, the FCK-1. We have the single seat version on the left and the two seat version on the right. The single seat version went into production a few years ago, but it's been on hiatus for a while while they developed a new two seat version, which you can see on the right. There's an absolutely incredible level of detail in this full resin kit, uh, including optional afterburner cans and open and closed configurations, optional air brakes, full weapons load, uh, an in-flight display stand if you choose to use that, and also a very handy jig, which you can see right here. That fits right into the belly during assembly and allows you to perfectly align the main landing gear legs with no mess, no fuss, which is a very nice touch for them. Well, they also offer a conversion set for a uh, Panzer I uh, light tank to make with the 4.7 centimeter PAC T uh, anti-tank gun. So the basic uh, Panzer I kit is not included. You have to find your own 172nd Panzer I kit. But it's a very complete and very detailed uh, conversion that will be welcomed by the 172nd military modelers. And finally, from SBS model of Hungary, their new kit, this will have the air race fans extremely excited, a Maki MC-72 uh, air racer. This is a you know, full resin kit, comes with photo etched parts, very nice high quality decals. SBS is noted for making detailed but very easy to assemble resin kits. If you just take a look here at the fuselage half, when I turn it over, you notice it has locating pins. And yes, the other side of the fuselage has matching locating holes. So this basically assembles like a plastic model kit. Uh, though obviously it's made of resin, so you'll have to use a different uh, type of glue to hold it all together. But it's an excellently detailed, easy to assemble kit of a very colorful uh, racer from the 1920s, if I recall correctly. I think a lot of people would be very excited to have this on their shelves.